In this video, we're going to learn how to read the contents of a file and store them into a dynamically allocated string in C. First, I'll show you a version that's easier to understand, and then we'll create an optimized version of the program. So the first thing we'll do is create a file pointer variable to actually access our file. So we'll have file, star file, to create our file pointer variable. We'll accept the name of the file to read as a command line argument. That means that argc should be set to two because the first element of argv is going to be set to the program name, and the second element of argv is going to be set to the file name. So if argc doesn't equal two, we have a problem. We'll output an error message. We'll have invalid number of arguments, followed by a new line, and then we're going to return one. We're going to return one because returning one, instead of returning zero, is a signal to the shell to the terminal here that something has gone wrong in the execution of our program. Next, we'll open the file. So we'll have file is equal to f open, and we're gonna have argv at the index one as our first argument, and the string r as our second argument. So argv at the index one is gonna give us the command line argument that our program was given. That's the name of the file that we're gonna open. r is gonna open that file in read mode, so we can read from the file. Now it's possible that fopen could fail. If it does fail, it's going to return null. So we'll check to see if file is equal to null. So if file is equal to null, we're again going to exit with an error message and status. So we'll have printf error opening file followed by a new line. And then again, we're going to return one to exit the program with an error status. In order to store the contents of the file into a dynamically allocated string, we need to know how much space to actually allocate. One way to solve this problem would be to read the file one character at a time and count the number of characters. Then we could dynamically allocate space for a string of that size. Then we could read the file again and store each character into that string. So this might not be the most optimal way of doing it, but let's try to do it this way first. So the first thing we'll do is create a variable to keep track of the total number of characters in the file. So we'll have size underscore t total is equal to zero. So if you're unfamiliar with the size underscore t type, it stores unsigned integers, so non-negative integers like zero, one, two, and so on. Size underscore t can handle very large numbers, so that's why we're gonna use it. Next, we'll create our while loop to read each character in the file and increment total each time. So we're going to have while not feof file and not f error file. So the loop is gonna stop when we either reach the end of the file or when there's been an error reading from the file. Then here we'll have f get c file to read the next character from the file. And we'll also increment total to recognize that we've read another character from the file. So if we have a file like this, each time f get c is called, it's gonna return the next character in the file so the first time it's called, it's gonna return this character. Then the next time it's called, it's gonna return this character. Right now, we're not actually storing the character it's returning anywhere because all we're trying to do is count the number of characters in the file. But eventually, once we reach the end of the file, f get c is actually gonna return a special eof character that means end of file. At that point, the next time this condition is checked, f eof is gonna return true which means not FEOF is going to be false. And that will actually stop the loop at that point. Now it's possible that there's been an error reading from the file. That's unlikely, but let's check for that. If that was the case, F error would actually return true. So we'll check for that here. If F error file is true, that means there's been an error reading from the file. And in that case, we're again gonna exit the program with an error message and status. So we'll have printf error reading from file followed by a new line. And then we're again going to return one. So now we can actually allocate space for our string. We're gonna have car star string is equal to malloc total. So string is gonna be our pointer to the dynamically allocated string on the heap and malloc is gonna return the memory address of the block of memory that we've allocated to store that string. We're allocating space for total number of bytes, 
or number of characters. And the reason why we're using total is that total is how we counted the number of characters in the file. Now, we did mention though that right here, f get c is eventually going to return eof for end of file. Total is still going to be incremented, even though eof is not actually a character in the file. So total is going to be set to one more characters than there actually is in the file. And that's actually okay. That's exactly how much space we need to allocate for the string, because our string is going to have to store one extra character, the null terminator character that actually terminates the string. So this will actually allocate space for exactly the amount of space that we need. So now we can read the file one character at a time and store it into this string. Our file pointer file is actually set to the end of the file. To move it back to the beginning of the file again, we can use rewind. So we'll have rewind file. And this here will rewind the file pointer to the beginning of the file again. Then we'll have size underscore t index is equal to zero. This is going to keep track of our index in our string as we read and store each character from the file into the string. Next, we'll create a while loop that's very similar to our last while loop. We'll have while not feof file and not f error file. This time we'll have string at index is set to the return value of f get c when it's past file. So f get c is going to read the file one character at a time, just as before. But this time we're actually going to store the character that's returned into the string at the current index. And we're going to increment index with each iteration of this loop so that we set the next character in the string each time the loop iterates. Now, eventually this loop is going to stop again once we reach the end of the file. It's possible it could stop because there's an error reading from the file. So again, we'll check for that. We'll have if f error file, then we're going to exit with an error message and status. So I'll have printf error reading from file, followed by return one again. Now we need to set the null terminator in our string to actually terminate the string. We're going to set the null terminator at the index, index minus one. So I'll have index minus one is equal to the special null terminator character that terminates the string. So index will be set to the total number of characters that our string can store. Index minus one will therefore give us the last index in our string, which needs to be that special null terminator character that ends the string. Now at this point, we're done with the file, so we can close our access to it. We'll have f close file to close the file. Next, we could output the actual string itself to make sure that it contains the file contents. So we'll have printf file contents colon, followed by a couple new line characters. And then we'll have printf percent s to output a string, followed by a new line. And we're going to output the actual string itself that should contain the file contents. Finally, at this point, we're done working with our dynamically allocated memory, so we should free it. So we'll have free string to free the dynamically allocated memory. So because we are using functions like free and malloc to work with dynamically allocated memory, we should also include stdlib.h up here because that's the library that makes those functions available to us. So we can save this and then compile our program and test it out. So over here, we'll compile our program and then we'll test it with file.txt. And we can see that we get back the file contents here with line one, two, four, five. So we are reading the file contents and storing them into a dynamically allocated string. So the only problem with this version of the program is that it's not very efficient. We're actually reading the entire file contents twice. And we want to avoid that because reading from a file is an expensive operation relative to other things like allocating memory or doing computations. It's expensive to access files because things like hard disks and solid state devices are much slower to access than things like random access memory where variables are stored. So let's create an optimized version of this program that only reads from the file one time. The way we're going to do that is dynamically allocate space for an initial block of memory. And if the space required to store the string exceeds the size of that initial block of memory, we're going to use realloc to allocate a greater amount of space. So we'll copy this here. 
and then we'll paste it into a new file here. So the first thing we'll do is delete this second loop here. Because we're only going to read the file contents once now, we don't need to do it again with this second loop here. And up here above the first loop that reads the file contents is where we're going to do the initial dynamic memory allocation for our string. So we'll have car star string is equal to malloc. So here's where it gets really interesting because we don't know the size of the file. It could be a small file that has 40 characters or it could be a massive file with a million characters. So we want to be careful about how we use malloc. We don't want to allocate some massive amount of space if we're not going to actually need it. So what we'll do is initially allocate space for some lower bound number of characters. And as we read the file contents, if we need to allocate more space, we're going to increase the block of memory by an increasing amount of space each time by first multiplying the lower bound by two, and then the result of that by two, and so on, until we hit some upper bound where we say this is the most amount of memory that we're willing to add to our block of memory at one time. This is a bit tricky, but the idea is that we're trying to minimize the number of calls to realloc to allocate additional space by increasing the amount of additional space that we allocate each time as our program recognizes that the file is larger and larger. Now, at some point though, we can't just keep doubling the amount of new space that we allocate. So we'll put an upper bound on this as well. So we'll use preprocessor constants to define our lower and upper bounds. We'll have number define lower 1024 and number define upper 65,536. And I'm not saying these are the best numbers to use, but they're reasonable numbers. So then down here, we'll declare a variable called increase. And we're gonna set increase to the lower bound. And increase is gonna keep track of the amount of space that we're going to increase our dynamically allocated block of memory by each time we call realloc. We'll also declare a variable called allocated that's gonna keep track of the total number of bytes that we've allocated for our string. And we'll initialize allocated to increase initially which is going to be the lower bound. And that's what we're going to initially allocate space for is that number of bytes. So we can store that number of characters in our string initially. So now down here in this while loop, we can actually read each character from the file one at a time and store it into this string here that we've already dynamically allocated space for. So what we'll have here is string at total is equal to the return value of f get c. So total is keeping track of the total number of characters that we've read from the file and stored into the string. If total ever exceeds the amount of characters that we have allocated for our block of memory, we need to increase the size of our block of memory. So if total is greater than or equal to allocated, then we need to increase the size of our block of memory. So what we'll do is increase allocated by the increase amount, and then we're going to call realloc to allocate a bigger block of memory. So we'll have string is equal to realloc when it's passed string and allocated as arguments. So realloc has two arguments. String is the memory address of the existing block of memory. Allocated is the new size for the reallocated block of memory. And we've increased allocated by increase to actually make our block of memory this much larger. So realloc is actually going to return a potentially new pointer. And that's because it's possible that when we request a larger block of memory, that it actually needs to be located in a different place in memory because there's not enough space to expand in the existing place in memory where our block of memory is currently. Next, we're going to double the increase amount. So that way, if a further reallocation of our block of memory is required, we're going to increase the size of the block of memory by an amount twice as big as we did this time. Now, eventually, we're going to hit some upper bound where we want to stop doing this, and we want to limit any future increases to that upper bound. So up here, we'll have a check for that. We'll have if increase is greater than or equal to the upper bound, then we're going to set increase to the upper bound. So we're going to have some upper limit on the amount of bytes that we're going to increase our block of memory by each time we need to. And here, we're going to enforce that limit. So at this point, our loop is now going to store the entire contents of the file into our string. We do have one problem though. 
As we allocate memory for our string, it's very possible that we're allocating more space than we actually need. So for example, the first time we allocate space for our string, we allocate space for 1024 bytes or the lower limit, whatever that is. Now, if our file only has 50 characters in it, we're going to have a lot of unused space. So what we can do is actually use realloc again when the loop is done to actually decrease the size of our allocated block of memory to exactly what we need and no more. So down here, we'll have string is equal to realloc string and total because we know that we need exactly total amount of bytes or characters to store our string. So this realloc is going to resize our block of memory to exactly the amount of space we need and no more. Next, we can just clean up the rest of this program here. So we no longer need this code here that was rewinding the file and allocating space. And here, when we set the null terminator for our string, we're now going to do it at the index total minus one because total is the counter variable that we were using in that loop to keep track of our current position in the string. So this should be it. Let's save this version of the program. And then over here, we'll compile it and test it out. So it compiled OK, and then we'll run it with file.txt to give it a test. And we get the same file contents as before. So the program is working. But we made this second version of the program to improve the performance of the program by only reading the file once. So let's actually do a performance test to compare the two versions of the program. Here I have a file that's very, very, very large. I don't know the exact size, but if we go through it here, it's very large. So let's actually run both programs with this very large file and we'll do a comparison of their execution time. So we'll use the time command line tool to do that. We'll run time with D and pig.txt and we'll actually try this a few times. And we can see that we're getting times of about 0.12 seconds. Let's do the same thing now with D2. And again, let's actually run it a few times. And we see that we're getting times of about 0.074 seconds. So our second version of the program is getting consistently better performance times than the first version. And that's because we're only reading the file one time. Accessing a file on the disk is an expensive operation. So that's why if we can only read the file once instead of twice, we're going to see this noticeable improvement in performance. So this is how we can read a file and store its contents into a dynamically allocated string in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.